Hey guys, in this video we're going to be looking at the transmission of a signal along a reflex valve. This is a reflex arc. One of the more popular questions of reflex arc is a flow diagram of the order in which things happen. So I'm going to label them quickly. At the finger end, you would almost always have a stimulus. In this case, let's use a drawing pin. This finger is going to touch a drawing pin. Now, obviously, if your finger touched a drawing pin, you'd pull your hand away quite quickly. So you have a stimulus. A stimulus is the pin. Inside of the finger, you've got receptors. So the little red parts with the ball on the end, those are receptors, pain receptors. And the pin underneath the finger would be picked up by the pain receptors and a message would be sent through this red neuron over here called the sensory neuron. The sensory neuron will then send a message up through to the spinal cord. The message would move across a gap over here called the synapse. to the relay neuron. The message would move again across another synapse to a motor neuron. And the motor neuron would then let, allow the message, the impulse, to travel through to an effector. An effector creates the response and an effector is almost always a muscle or a gland. In this case it's going to be the bicep because you're going to pull your finger away from the pin quite quickly. Now you'd need to be able to put this into a bit of a flow chart. So stimulus, receptor, sensory neuron, Synapse goes to relay neuron, goes to eh, another synapse, which passes the message on to the motor neuron, which passes the message on to your effector, which is a muscle or gland. And it doesn't matter if you go over two lines with your flow diagram, as long as you have your arrows pointing in the correct direction, you'll be okay. Now, there are another couple of, uh, another couple of labels that you need to know about on this particular diagram. Um, this over here is the spinal cord, and the spinal cord is made up of two parts. The first part of the spinal cord is the white matter, and the second part of the spinal cord is called the gray matter. Now, the gray matter... It's generally the stuff where all the nuclei are. So in the middle here, you'll see a nuclei for the motor neuron and a nuclei for a relay neuron. The white matter is the bit on the outside. This bit over here where the sensory neuron nucleus is, is called the dorsal root ganglion. Now, the traditional definition of a ganglion is like a, a cluster of nuclei, uh, nerve nuclei. So that's the dorsal root ganglion. This branch over here is called the dorsal root. The branch down at the bottom is called the ventral root. Now they're tough words, but if you think about it, the dorsal fin of a fish is the one on top, isn't it? So dorsal root means the root on top. The ventral root, the ventral fin of a fish is the one at the bottom. So ventral root is at the bottom. Now all of these, um, parts of grey matter lead up to the brain. So the grey matter, um, the spinal cord here, this is part of the central nervous system. So this is the central nervous system. The parts of the motor neuron and the parts of the sensory neuron that are outside of the spinal cord, so kind of from there, this side is your peripheral nervous system, your PNS. So your central nervous system is the brain and spinal cord. The PNS is everything else. 
neurotransmission happens with neurotransmitters and they're a type of chemical. This over here is what we call the synapse. So remember the last diagram we had, the relay neuron and the motor neuron. Now the synapse is the little gap between the two. So what we're looking at over here, this gap is called the synapse. It's there, All right? Now the synapse, nerve impulses, move down the axon of a neuron and reach the end of the neuron. They st the nerve impulses stimulate little vesicles which contain a chemical called neurotransmitters to start to move to the end of the cell membrane. Then once the neurotransmitters in their vesicles get to the cell membrane, they spill out of the cell membrane and start to move across the gap. So the neurotransmitters diffuse across the gap. When the neurotransmitters reach the other side of the gap, they attach to this membrane of the next neuron. And because the neurotransmitters have reached this side, they begin another nerve impulse. So they initiate another nerve impulse, which then moves down the axon of the next neuron. Then what happens is the neurotransmitters get released from there, and they get broken down by enzymes. All right, so enzymes break down the neurotransmitters, and all the little chemical parts get reused back on this side to create more neurotransmitters in vesicles. Okay, so can you put those into steps? Step one, you should have the nerve impulses traveling down the axon. Step two, you should have the nerve impulse um, creating the movement of the vesicles to the membrane. So vesicles then release neurotransmitter. into the synapse um, three once a neurotransm uh, neurotransmitter diffuses so the neurotransmitter diffuses across synapse four ne the neurotransmitter attaches to the membrane five it starts a nerve impulse up on the other side and then six your neurotransmitters are broken down by enzymes. Okay, so really important here, the impulse is electrical. Here the impulse is chemical. So it's always a chemical impulse, it's neurochemical. So neurotransmitters are chemicals, and here the impulse is electrical. Okay, so you've got an electrical impulse coming down the nerve and the axon. You've then got the chemical impulse diffusing across the synapse, and you've got an electrical impulse on the other side.